Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I wanted to go over some supplies that I use um, just to make my life easier as a fluid artist. None of this is ob obviously mandatory or you have to have it, but it's just things that I've learned over the years for, from doing this. I've learned from other artists, products that they use, and I'm just going, that's brilliant. That's so brilliant. <laughs> so as I go through some of the products, I'll try to let you know exactly where I got them. Um, it, this is not an endorsement. This is not, you have to go out and get it. It's just things that make my life easier as a fluid artist. So let me go ahead and start showing you the products. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I'll try to um, get to them as fast as I can. And like I said, none of these are endorsements. It's just things that make my life easier. All right, everyone, let's get started. I've got a mirage of things to go through here. And I know my table looks like a mess because I've got so many products out. Uh, to get started, when you first get your canvas, I mean, this is what I do. You don't have to do it. Not all artists do it. I like to tape off the back of my canvas. This happens to be frog tape. Um, I like it. it. It protects it well. It gives clean lines. So that's what I use. And of course, I cut it with my scissors. I also reuse these. I keep these so that when I'm like um, using a strainer or something or have a stir stick, I can lay it on top of this and I'm, I just reuse it and reuse it. So I try to reuse as many products as possible. Next thing is levels. I've got a giant level for when I have large canvases. I wanna make sure that it's uh, level all directions. And I've got two smaller ones here. Um, I just find it useful to have the different sizes so that I'm not always, you know, trying to make sure and move it. And I just like having, you know, the different sizes. Put this up, we'll draw it around there. I have a tape measure um, because <laughs> I buy some of the smaller canvases for uh, to practice on and I forget what size they are. So I use my tape measure <laughs> to look and gauge what size it is. Uh, just like this one. So this is a practice canvas, obviously you can tell. I don't throw away canvases that um, I practice on. I reuse them and reuse them. And eventually you have to, you know, kind of toss them. But I just keep using them over and over again. But I wouldn't know what size this is. I think it's a 14 by 14, but I want to always make sure before I, you know, uh, film a video. Okay, another thing. I use thumbtacks sometimes. I've gotten away from these. Not I use them sometimes. I don't use them all the time. Um, and then I use a rubber mallet to hammer them into the back of the canvas. It just makes it so much easier than trying to push it in there. And even if you have the small ones, which I do have some of those little bitty ones um, that I really don't use anymore, you can use the rubber mallet. It just makes life easier. Okay, another thing that I use to prop up my canvases are these stands. Now these are from Molly's Artistry. Um, obviously I haven't cleaned them 100%. But here's one that's really dirty. But I'll tell you, I love them. Um, I bought myself two sets, and they are so easy to peel the paint off. I mean, look at this. It, oops, sorry. It just peels right off. I mean, I absolutely love them. And what I do is I'll use them and use them, and then um, wait until the paint gets, you know, a little bit thicker, and then I'll peel them. So, you'll see me a lot of times, and they're dirty, and they're like this. But I just find that a little bit thicker paint, they're easier to peel. You can peel them with thin paint. It obviously works. I mean, it really does. But the thicker the paint, the easier. So I just let it build up. Love the stands. Molly, thank you for creating these stands. Okay. Obviously, rubber gloves. Not everybody wears rubber gloves. I like to, but I still get paint everywhere. <laughs> if you've seen any of my videos, I get paint everywhere. Uh, I'm just a messy painter. Okay, another product that I use, and I just got this, um, oh, I don't know, about a month and a half ago. Love it. Now, I have a table, and I've covered it in thick visqueen, just clear visqueen, and um, I keep it on my table just to preserve it, and I do go through and clean it off often. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is just plastic covering. I love it, love it, love it, and it comes in a roll and you do this, and then you can cut it, and it cuts beautifully. Um, I'm not gonna cut it right now, but it does cut beautifully. Love this product. Um, I just happened to come across it when I was looking for something to protect my table. So I keep the visqueen down, and then I put this on top of it. 
and you can wipe this up. You can scrape it. I scrape my paints all the time. Great product. Okay, torches. I have a large torch and I have a small torch. I love my small one. It broke the other day. I'm so upset. So I've got to order another one. It, it will not ignite. I don't know why. Um, I'm sure it's something I've done to it. But it comes, um, I buy these little butane fuels. And this is what I normally use. This one is very powerful. Um, it scares me a little bit. I do use it. I'm, I'm having to use it right now while this one is not working until I get a new one. But uh, it works just fine. Um, and comes with these canisters. You just put the top right on top of it. I like the smaller one better though. Okay, some other products. Strainers. I've got different sizes. I actually have another one that's about this size. Fits perfectly on a cup. Strain your flow trawl. Strain your paints that you scrape off the table. Use them for whatever. And then just rinse them off and reuse them again. And then like I said, a lot of times when, I'm, especially when I'm using this big one, I'll just lay it on here until I get a chance to go and clean it up. That's that frog tape cover. So this right here is the cardboard, and I know a lot of people reuse these for a lot of things. I use them to help scrape my tables. I use them to test on, um, make sure consistency is correct. I actually do little tests as far as um, uh, the products that I'm using. Um, you can swipe with them. There's so many things you can do with a leftover cardboard, and I save every one of them, and I use them all the time. Great products, or great, great uses. Okay, another product that I absolutely love is this right here. I love this. I mean, you just open the lid, you pour what you need out, you can wipe up this right here, close it, and it seals it, and it keeps it airtight. Um, it does have this little tab back here so that you can seal it or open it when you're pouring so it flows better. I, I love it. I went and bought me another one. And I'll show you what else you can use this for. Just a game changer. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without it. I buy these big containers. So if I'm making um, a lot of one color or a, um, a batch uh, pouring medium that I want to put in something large, these fit on it as well. Love it. So simple and so easy. It makes it, makes pouring easier. Um, it doesn't give you, when you have lids, I have lids for these. It doesn't give you the crusties that you're pouring through. It's just, it, I love these. These are wonderful. Other products that I use. I use mason jars. Now with mason jars, you have to make sure you clean this off really, really well because the lid does stick. So, I've got several of these and I do use them, but I prefer these right here. These, I believe, are little yogurt containers. Um, I actually got this idea from um, Sarah Taylor. She uses these a lot and I ordered some and they're wonderful. I have a ton of paint in those. I use squeeze bottles. I've got some Lily Veffy squeeze bottles, a bunch of these. I love these, they're easy, um, they seal well. I use these for, um, I keep a lot of, like my GAC 800 in these. Um, so I've got just various sizes of the squirt bottles. I also have various sizes of cups that I use. Some are clear, some obviously aren't. Pull these back. I've got paper cups of different sizes. So I use all of these and for, for different things. Um, I just may need a little bit of, of um, paint and not a whole lot, so I use the small ones. Um, so, it just varies on what I'm actually trying to accomplish. All right. So, lots of different kind of containers. And then, obviously, the really large one. And I have a medium-sized one, too, but I just have one of those. So, let me get this out of the way. All right. Other products that I use. This, I just happened to find at a home store. Um, it's just a cheap little flimsy um, spoon rest. It's silicone. So, I use it all the time, and the, the paint just peels right off. See? I just haven't cleaned that one, and that's wet. So, I love it. it it's super easy. It's another silicone product that just peels real easily. I also found this spoon so that if I'm dipping um, a large amount of paint 
or mixing something, this works really well. Again, it peels right off its silicone. I have this stir stick. I believe this is a Lily Biffy. I'm not sure. Um, but it's great for large containers like this. Love it. Um, I'll also use stir sticks that I get at the paint store. And I reuse them, as you can see, um, to help with the larger containers. Let's see. I use popsicle sticks, and as you can see, I reuse my popsicle sticks. I just wipe them clean, and you can reuse them. I use them all the time, over and over again. These are Lily Veffy. This one's not clean very good. This is a Lily Veffy product. It's a stir stick as well. They clean off super duper easy as well. I have a silicone spatula. Same thing as all these other silicone products. They're just easy to clean. You can move paint around with this. I mean, there's a multitude. You can scrape your table with it. Multitude of uses for this, this tool as well. And this one I actually got from Canela Sirocco. She's the one that turned me on to this tool. I'm trying to remember to uh, give kudos to the people that turn me on to these. Uh, let's see. I have my small hair dryer. Now, this one, I know a lot of people ask where I got this. Um, Tammy Anderson had this small hair dryer, and I loved it. And she actually put a link when they became available again. Apparently, they were unavailable for a while. And I got it from um, uh, a link that she had provided. It is, let's see, got so much paint on it. I believe it's called Flower, and it's a mini. It does come with the condenser, so it's small. Um, I have a larger hair dryer that's got a bigger condenser on it, so depending on what I'm doing, I like this one because it's got a lot of control to it, and it's just got an off, high, and low. Love this small one. Another tool. Another tool I meant to mention a minute ago. Another lovely Buffy. I use this to um, spread my paint sometimes, to scrape my table. Um, you can swipe with it. Another multitude of uses for this, this particular product. All right. Press and seal. Love press and seal. Sometimes I make up paints, like I said, in these small cups. In these smaller cups. I don't want a whole lot. And when I go to use the paint, I still have some left. Well, instead of messing up and using, you know, just an itty bitty bit of this jar, what I will do is put press and seal over it. Like I made this one yesterday. I'm going to use it today, which is why I put press and seal on it. And it keeps it fresh. It literally seals to um, the cup and there is not a problem. It does the same thing with paper cups. Works beautifully. Love press and seal. I have a drawer down here, <laughs> if you're wondering where I keep putting stuff. Uh, let's see. Sponge and pantyhose. Yes, pantyhose. Um, I got this idea from Molly Leach, Molly's Artistry, and I know there's other artists out there that do the same thing. Just a plain old sponge, car sponge, and then you cover it with... Um, pantyhose, and you can varnish your paintings. It makes it so much easier, no brush strokes, um, it's quick, it's just super, super simple. So, great idea. Pantyhose really work. All right, the next thing is a step stool. I am tall, I'm not, not super tall, but I'm tall enough, I'm 5'7". But sometimes I just can't reach. I need to blow something that's way on the other side of the canvas. Well, I don't know how many times I've leaned over and gotten my apron, my chest, my necklace, something in the paint. So I've learned to use a step stool. <laughs> I know that sounds simple, but it took me about two years <laughs> to finally get one. Great thing to have. And they're cheap. I think I paid $13 for that one. Okay, another thing that I use is a squirt bottle. Now, I do abstract art as well as fluid art, um, and I use this more in my abstract art than I do my fluid art, but it is very good to have. It um, You can squirt your canvas down. The other use for it is if your canvas is not taunt, then turn, flip it over, spray the back of the canvas, wipe it down, and then flip it back over, and it'll help it um, 
get taunt again. Okay, the next thing is palette knives. I do use these. I love the palette knives. I've got some cheap ones. I mean, some really cheap ones. And then I've got, this is actually a cake um, decorating tool that I use. This one right here is my favorite. I absolutely love it. It's, I mean, just wonderful. I got the idea from Sarah Taylor again. She had, Sarah Taylor, she, she's great. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful palette knife. And I, it's so much easier to use. And this is what she showed me. Watch this. I mean, yes, it bends, but it's pretty thick. And then this one, I mean, it's just so flexible. And it just, it's just wonderful. I love it. Okay, a couple of other things that I couldn't actually put on my table to show you is this is my pegboard that has all of my paints on it. I hang my rubber mallet, as you can see, and my big strainer, little dustpan. Um, I just got tired of them being on the shelf and knocking them over every time I grabbed a paint. It's obviously, I'm out of a couple right there, but it just makes my life so much easier. Um, these are two paints. They're not all the two paints that I have, but they're ones that I use. Um, pretty much, you know, pretty often. So I just put a little basket down there. Um, another thing that I could not move, that right there, it just, my lights are now off. It, I, I use them at Christmas all the time. And I thought, you know, how perfect is it to turn my studio lights on and off? So I use it all the time. Also this cart, um, I don't move the cart, but I do use it. It's just real handy. It's next to my table. It's got all of my products on it, palette knives, um, stir sticks, my tape, push pins, obviously my uh, brushes. And then below, I keep my larger um, things of paint and varnish and stuff like that. So those are just a few things that I could not move to show you. But I just wanted to show you some of the products that I use that just have made my life so much easier and and i hope that you benefited from this and i know a lot of these are common um but if you're new you may not know what helps you out so i just wanted to give you a little bit of what i use um pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for joining me if you have any questions please put them in the comments below and i'll be happy to answer them hope you have a great day bye